Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we are going to look at a Honda Prelude. The car we're going to look at today is not a car I generally think of when I hear the name Honda Prelude. This is a first generation one which was originally introduced in 1978. Usually when I hear Honda Prelude, I think of a uh, fourth or fifth generation one. This one is a first generation one that's about 20 years newer than the cars I usually think of. And there it is. We'll do a quick uh, look at the exterior. Gotta look real closely at this license plate. One thing I like to point out is you can get right up on this license plate and you can even read what it says right there. That is a highly detailed license plate. And I don't mean the license plate itself, I mean that right there. You can read that. And the uh, Daniel at A3DR Studio is the guy who made the model of the car. Don't get too close, otherwise you'll just go inside of it. And there is what the car looks like in the exterior. We can pull up the J-Beam structure real quick and you see it does have a custom made J-Beam structure for it. And it seems to work relatively well. Go ahead and get rid of that. Oh, no, I clicked too much. There we go. Now we can go ahead and look at the interior. I would say this is one of the best interiors I have ever seen for a car in Beam and G Drive, honestly. Because it just has some really nice texture work in here that makes this interior look great. And you can look at the chairs right here and you can see the stitching in them. It's that detailed. And that is just one of those really small details. This makes the interior of this car look amazing. Like, if you took a screenshot of just the interior right here, you wouldn't think that's from a game. You would think that's like a 3D render, but that is from a game, actually. And uh, the gauges do function, those cool, crazy gauges that they used to make in the 70s. Like, I wish they made crazy gauges like that in cars more often. Like, it seems like most cars nowadays have two separate gauges that are totally separate. This one has like a cool tachometer inside of the speedometer. And the steering wheel churns, but it doesn't exactly rotate as far as you would expect it would. It only does about uh, 90 degrees of rotation which is kind of unusual, but it does it does steer when you go left or right. The blinkers, when you hit them, the little lever on the side does uh, move, like you were, uh, would actually have to do if you were putting the blinkers on and off. And the blinkers themselves do function. The pedals, I assume they work, but I can't see them. The shifter for the transmission does not move. It stays uh, stationary no matter what you do. And uh, that's the interior. And like I said, just that detail right there looking this closely at the chair and you can see the stitches is just awesome anyways let's go ahead and reset this and uh, do some driving from the outside since it's right in front of us we might as well do a quick suspension test now this is using the stock suspension setup which is what the car would come with from the factory but there are two other suspension setups that we can choose that come with the mod and I plan to use this later on but first I wanted to show you how the stock one performed now going over that it seemed to do great it didn't bottom out, the bumpers didn't scrape or anything, and the ride itself looked pretty smooth. You really can't ask for more than that when you do the suspension test, honestly. That is as good as it gets. The engine is also the stock engine that the car would come with, which is only an 80 horsepower engine. It doesn't feel like it only has double digit horsepower though, because the car itself weighs 970 kilograms or so, if I remember correctly, which is ridiculously light. And it's able to be that light because it's an older car with less uh, safety requirements than newer cars, and it's a pretty small car in the first place. So with it being that small and light, the 80 horsepower engine uh, doesn't feel that slow. It feels more like a low 100 horsepower engine, which isn't, say which isn't saying much. It's not like a fast car with this setup by any means, but it feels faster than you would expect. So there is the first crash we have done. And that was actually a pretty good crash. The engine actually fell out, so there's a good chance to actually look at the engine. The engine is a nice model to it. I should actually show you the engine in the car. <laughs> because it's really you can't really appreciate it when it's all mangled up like that. So here's what the crash looked like. We uh, got a little bit of damage in the rear. But for the most part, all the damage is contained in the front. And it looks pretty good. Like, I'm looking at this and I see no real issues. I didn't mention the sunroof or the moonroof on this thing. Like, one of those things. I swear... Every Prelude I've ever seen has a moonroof. They had to have come standard because I've never seen a Prelude without a moonroof. Just a random thing I thought of. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and reset this guy. So let's go ahead and take a good look at that engine. And the easiest way to do that is to remove the hood completely because I'm some sort of crazy person who has no way to just open the hood. I have to tear it off and say, look, there's the engine. Are you happy now? And I would say I am very happy looking at this engine because it has a ton of details. So normally in Beam&G Drive, the engine would have a basic shape of the engine block a radiator shape, and then a carburetor if it's carbureted. And that's honestly about it. And this is including the stock vehicles. This one has a ton more details, though. For example, the engine block, it's not just a basic shape. That is, like, 
the exact shape that engine actually has. I looked up pictures and it's like, that looks exactly like it. And the carburetor, the carburetor has some nice details too. Like you have the lines coming off of the carburetor. You don't normally see that. Like that is a really cool detail to see. And you have this sticker over here, which you can almost read. It's in Japanese, so I can't read it. But you have like a detail like that. Who's going to actually notice that and appreciate it? Most people won't. But I see it and I think that's awesome. One thing I can read though is like this radiator hose over here. It says Yokohama CT4455 Rad. I can read that nice and clearly. And again, who's going to actually look at that? I don't know, but I love the fact that you can just pop into this engine bay and be like, oh, look at all the parts. Like you can say over here, oh, look, here is a uh, coolant cap where you would put in more coolant if you're burning it, which is never something you want to have happen, but it does happen sometimes. But you have that there, and then have a hose coming off of it into this tank. And that tank, I would assume, would be a uh, coolant overflow reservoir. Like that details, man. And then you have the battery right here, the battery. And it has the lines coming off of the battery, and it has a holder for the battery, and the air intake right here, and you have holders for the air intake. It's just, this engine bay is amazingly detailed. You have an oil filter down there. I don't think it's, I'm not going to say it has every single part of the engine modeled, but it's one of the most detailed engines I've ever seen for this game. It is awesome to be looking at it. Like, you have hangers for this radiator hose there. You have, um, you know, stuff I don't even know what it is for sure. Like that little, those little boxes. Like that's one of those things where it's like, I, I assume the guy who made this model must have had one of these or something, or had some amazing pictures to be able to model all this out because this is amazing, man. Like I, I could just run around this thing forever, but I can't be doing that. Instead, I should crash it. Because the unfortunate thing is, although the engine bay is awesome, the details are too small to really crash that well. And uh, it's one of those things where if he actually made the engine bay as detailed as it actually looks in terms of crashing abilities, you would have so much lag it'd be crazy so you'll notice like over here it just kind of becomes a mangled mess but the engine block actually holds up pretty well and so does the like carburetor like those ones I think uh might have some J-beam structure to them it's hard to tell maybe let me reset it and I could actually tell then oh so taking a peek at that yeah there is some J-beam structure to the the, the uh, engine block and that's about it because those other ones like I said, if you did that, you'd end up with a really laggy car for something nobody would really notice. Anyways, go ahead and, uh, whoops, get the skeleton off, and we can look at some of the uh, other versions of this car that you can choose from. So right now, we have this one. And there are three others that are pretty much the same, except the, the wheels are different. And that's this one, this one, and this one. I'm not going to go ahead and spawn those, because you can see what the wheels look like in the thumbnail, so there's no need to. The ones that are more interesting, though, are the JDM B18C Street Sleeper, Rally Sport, and then the JDM B18C Type R VTEC 200 horsepower. Those three are pretty interesting. So I'm going to start off with the normal uh, JDM B18 blah, 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 blah. Don't feel like saying it again. And the only difference between these three is just the wheels. So I'm going to just say, give me the one with the normal wheels and make it red. While we're on the topic of engines, I might as well show you the engine in this one, too, because it has a totally different engine, but it also looks really nice. So there is a quick look at it, and I'm not going to look at this one as much as the other one. I just wanted to let you see it real quickly, because I'm sure most of you are bored of looking at engines by now. Uh, but just some fun things to point out. You even see a little dipstick right here. You have the, in the uh, radiator hose hangers, which are still there, even though the radiator hose is gone from that spot. And you have the battery, which has been moved, and it's also a more modern battery. The other battery was like a design for a battery you would see in the time period this car came out, I would assume. But this one, it looks like a battery you would see in a normal car nowadays. Don't know where the uh, things that were normally there would have gone, though. They're gone for good. Uh, but that's just a quick glimpse at that engine bay. And you got a nice crisp engine right here, though. You can see, like, that dual overhead cam VTEC text looks really nice. It's all some nice stuff in here. Uh, but like I said, you're probably bored of engines, so we're going to put the hood on and do some driving. So like like I said in the text, this one has 200 horsepower. The stock one had 80, which means we have about 2.5 times more horsepower than this car came with from the factory. Which means we could go 100 miles per hour in the time it takes me to explain the amount of horsepower it has. Because we're at 100 right now. Now let's crash into a wall at 100 miles per hour, sliding into it. Well, it's going to be like 70 when we hit it. Point is... Get a nice hard crash right there. And, uh, looks pretty good to me. A little bit of a funky looking thing right there. I don't know exactly what's going on there. But for the most part, it looks like a pretty good crash. This version also has a stiffer suspension setup than the stock one. And the easiest way to demonstrate that is to just go over these blocks again. And you'll see 
that the car bounces a lot more violently than the stock one, and then I even lost a mirror was bouncing so hard. So you might be thinking, well, why would you want a stiff suspension setup? Because generally, stiffer is better for grip, and it makes your car handle better. The disadvantage is, of course, comfort. You saw how uh, terribly uncomfortable that was to the car. It was so rough of a ride that the mirror flew off, basically. But for a video game, it's like, why would I care how comfortable it is? I'm not actually in the car. I'm imaginarily in the car, and I can't feel the bump, so give it as stiff as it can go without it uh, negatively affecting the grip, is what I would say. So here's a 100 mile per hour crash almost. It was 95, 96 in there. And, uh... Well, a little bit of glitchiness on that front end. Or is that, or is that oh, that's just the, uh, I guess that's not really glitchiness. Uh, it looks pretty decent. License plate partially disappeared, but aside from that, it looks good. I love looking at the engine, how it's just sitting there. Like, the engine's just sitting there right there, looking shiny and new. You could just take that out and put it in a new car, and you're good to go. Maybe not. It looks good, but it's probably totally ruined because it got crushed so hard. Anyways, I want to go ahead and use the next version of this car, which is the Rally Sport version. And I'm going to make this one green. So this version of the car has the engine and differential from the stock version of it, but the suspension is a custom-made Rally one, which kind of feels like a combination of the Sport and the stock one all in one, because it has the ability to go over bumps like the stock suspension, but it seems like it's able to go through a corner a lot like the Sport one. And aside from the fact it's, be it's able to go over uh, jumps better, it doesn't feel that much different from the Sport one, to be honest. So I would say if I was building a car for racing, I'd probably just use the Rally one because I like it. If I make a mistake and go over a bump, the car will be fine that way. And that's um, really the only difference between that one and the other one is the suspension. And the engine is the stock one. And the suspension, actually, the only difference is the fact that this one has uh, Rally struts in the rear. If you put the other struts back in, is basically the suspension setup from the 200 horsepower edition. So that's uh, something to take note of. And I just wanted to back into that wall right there. Seemed to, to uh, work out all right. Let's do this. Let's spawn another car and then rear end it and see what that does. It's always good to do a crash between two of the same car because then you get two crashes in the time of one. Nice and convenient. So I'll use the 200 horsepower version and I'll throw on the different wheels just because I can and make sure it's a different color. And uh, we'll just rear end him at high speeds. Very high speeds. Like, uh, let's do, let's aim for 80. I don't know if I'll actually reach 80, but that is the goal. So I'll say, park this car right there. Put the parking brake on on my other car. And since I've already done a crash where I just slam into a wall with the front of the car, I figure we can use the interior camera for this one just to give us some variety. And uh, we're gonna ram the back end of that other prelude up there at about uh, 120. That must be in kilometers per hour. Because there's no way I'm going that fast. So that's probably about like 80 miles per hour, I would guess. Because that's what I was aiming for, and usually I'm pretty good at that. So that's what you see from the inside. The interior actually stood up really well in this car. I didn't see any, like, sharp edges or anything. So we can go ahead and peek out of the car and maybe remove the other car out of the way. Well, first, can we drive this thing like this? Oh, yeah, I made a prelude limo. It's not your traditional limo either. But I made a prelude limo. You ready to go to prom? Yeah, I got the limo, man. It's made of two preludes, a combined 280 horsepower, eight wheels. I know you want to get in this thing. All right, for real though, let's go ahead and try to separate these guys because they're not coming apart like that. I was hoping if I drove around, they'd eventually come apart. That's not gonna happen. So there is the one that got rear-ended, which is driving away right now. And it seems to have crashed all right. The one thing that looks funny is how the the uh, trunk popped up all open. And then the rest of it got crunched in. How's the interior look actually on this one if you look behind you? Hello, things back here? Uh, hard to tell. Just a mangled mess back there. Ooh, that camera got messed up. Now it's the engine cam instead of the hood cam. All right, how'd this one do? Although I've done a crash very similar to this. Seems like it did fine. No real issues there. I wonder if the hood is hinged at the uh, front. Like, it almost looks like it would have been, like the way it kind of went foop and flipped and stuff, if you understand what I mean. 
Like, it looks like the hinges could be right there, and it pops open like that. But I don't think that's the way it is. It's just the way it crashed, it makes it look like that. So that's interesting. Anyways, reset. Reset. Uh, I want you to rotate 90 degrees. Like so, and you are going to get crashed into by another prelude once again. And you know what we could do for this one? Is we could be the interior car that's getting crashed into if I time things right. So we're going to say... Eight times slow mo right about here. And then we're gonna freeze physics now. Go to that car, and it was 81 miles per hour for reference. And now we should just be able to unfreeze physics, and yes. All right, how'd the interior hold up? Looks like uh, the dash on this side got ruined, as you would expect, considering this car's grill is literally right up on it. That side of the dash, though, seems to have held up all right. Um, I don't think this driver's gonna be okay, though. I mean, you look at the seat, and it's, uh, kind of been obliterated. Which is not a good thing. We can try, uh, moving the cars off of each other so we can actually look at things. So that car looks pretty much the same. This car's gonna look entirely different, though. And that's not looking good for that driver at all. That driver is... He's not gonna make it, dude. He is... Terribly, terribly injured. Probably dead. Although it's cool to see the door, like how you can see the trim still, even though it's obliterated. Kind of glitchy more than anything, but it just looks, it looks weird. Whoa! Now that looks weird. That looks really weird. You still drive! Oh, that's some dedication. So like I can still drive, no problem. It's funny, this car seems fragile when only like the front suspension, like if you do a, a jump, that is what'll kill this car. Something like that. Not a problem. Even for the, the yellow one, it still drives, doesn't it? Uh, not quite on the yellow one. The green one, though, he still drives. And Ooh, look at that rear wheel. That is some amazing, amazing tire setup right there. Dude, I know people who pay a lot of money to have their tires look like that, and I have no idea why, because it absolutely ruins the car. That is, like, exactly what people pay for. There you go, guys. Pro tip, if you ever want your car to look like that, just slam into it with another car at about 80 miles per hour and you will get the perfect suspension set up. And we should try to mirror this. That's my uh, general thought right here, is we should try to mirror the crash. And then we have an equally crashed car on both sides. So let's try that. Now probably this one should be a little bit slower since the structural strength of the car has already been ruined, but I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to park it right here and hit it at whatever speed the yellow car ends up coming at it at. Why are you still rolling? Stay. Now this one we can see it from the exterior, although it's kind of already ruined, so it's not much to see. But we can at least see it from the exterior just to uh, say, ooh, ah, you know. So there you go. Not much to see, like I said, because it's already broken. Get the yellow car out of here. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, but it doesn't drive. The wheels are perfectly aligned, though. And, yeah, that means now both driver and passenger, no good. They're gone. They're done. They're done. Reset him, and now they're good to go. I'll try doing the roof crusher, but I don't know if it'll actually be tall enough for it to make, uh, much, uh, like, purpose. Like, it'll just probably go right under it, like, what was that? Was that a tunnel? It's like, no, it's supposed to crush the roof. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was so damaging. Oh, well, we could do this instead. Ooh, that, that bumper whipped around. And that broke it. It's funny, that big collision on the side didn't break it because it didn't hit on the actual wheels. That one, it hit the wheels, which just ruined everything in the front with the engine and the transmission. And now they no longer function, especially that wheel. That wheel's really no longer functioning. So we can just say reset. And how about this? Let's try doing some dumb things like using the cannon on the car and there where is the car that was close so we can shoot him from a bunch of different angles the first one can be like right behind it it's gonna roll up right behind it so stealthy like this is stealth you don't notice there's a cannon right behind you until it's too late does that still drive Nope, that is no longer driving, and it almost looks like a, uh, like a, like a truck, uh, a ute, I guess is what it actually more looks like. It looks like a ute, the way the back end, just, the whole trunk fell off, and now it's like, oh, it's a ute. No, it's not, it's just a car whose trunk been, 
has been torn off and the, everything else has been ruined as well. Alright, what about this? Let's, uh, let's shoot it from the side. Wait for it. I gotta line this cannon up. You know what actually might be cool is here. I'll do it like this. I'll freeze physics, reset the car, which is kind of in the air, and then shoot the cannon. Yeah, I hit him in the air. I don't know if it made much difference, but it was cool. Well, I think it did because it hit it kind of under the car. You can see the the funny shape of the body right there. And it'll still drive. Uh, that glitchy part that's flying through the roof might be either something in the engine bay or one of the seats? Oh, that's the dash. Oh, no. It tore the dash off. And the interesting thing is that's not like the dash deforming. It looks like the dash actually got torn off. I don't know if that's even something I've that it's supposed to do or it just looks like it did, but I swear to you, that looks like the dash was torn off and it's not stretching and glitching like it normally would, but you can only see one side of it, so it looks really bad from some angles, but then this angle you can see clearly it has the shape of the dash. Interesting. Very interesting. As far as I know though, that thing shouldn't be a detachable part. But maybe it is. I but I really doubt it to be honest. But it's just like, huh. Makes you think, it'd be cool if a car did that now. Anyways, cannon, normal shot with some slow-mo. That was uh, kind of anticlimactic. A lot uh, more boring than expected. So yep, there you go, there's another cannon shot. I'm bored of cannons, so let's reset them both. And how about instead of a cannon, we use a crusher? No, I don't want the cannon. Stop, stop. Crusher. You understand me? I said crusher. Not crush her, unless the car is a her, in which case, crush her. Alright, car is in place. Crusher going to crush now. See how it holds up, see if there's any major glitches or anything like that. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, it was, it was good, it was good, it was fine. It had like a little lag spike right there, but then nothing happened. I thought something really bad was going to happen, and now we have a perfect cube. Well, sort of. Crush it again, make it more cubular. Cubular is a word, right? It is now. Probably is a word. Sounds like a word. Anyways, though, there is what happens when you crush the car. At least at that angle. We could always uh, do a slightly different angle if we wanted to. I could figure out which one's the car. This one's the car. So we could say, do it uh, like that. Crush it again! So slow to crush. But then when it gets there, it does a good job. Ooh, that sounded kind of unusual, like a really deep sounding crush. And again, car looks pretty cubular. I'm going to keep using that word. Might have a totally different meaning, but I like that word. All right, reset it one more time. And then the last thing we're going to do, which is a crush that usually ends up being really glitchy, is when you have the car partially in the crusher. That always gets messy. So we're going to say right there and crush it. Just like so. Perfect. So like I said, that one always gets a little messy. But the car seemed to do a pretty good job of holding up for something like that. Not gonna drive, unfortunately. I mean, from this angle right here, it looks totally fine. No, this angle. Like, the door came off, that's it. From this angle, it doesn't even look like a car anymore. It looks like a... Well, actually, it looks like one of those cars with a motorcycle attached to the rear end. You know, the ones that have three wheels, if you've ever seen them before. That's what it looks like to me, but it's broken. So what else can we do with that? Is there anything else I could do here that might be interesting? Um, H-Cube. Nah, it'd be boring. H-Cube's just a block, basically. It's not much different than crashing into a block. Same with, like, the spinner and stuff. There's not much difference between that and just crashing into something. So I think that's all we're going to do here. We can go ahead and, uh move on to a different location and do some things there. For example, we can go to, not Brutal Slope, but let's go somewhere we don't usually go that often, and that is The Descent. So it doesn't really matter what version of the Prelude we use here, I could just choose whichever, and I like power, so we're going to use the powerful one. And all we're going to do is just drive straight. Pretty simple task, and you can notice the car's actually pretty small. Like when I go from that truck to the Prelude, you notice how small it is. And that's kind of relating back to the fact about how light it is. 
It's light because it's small, not because it's using carbon fiber or nothing like that. Believe me, they didn't use carbon fiber in a car like this in 1979. Or whatever this car is supposed to be. I don't know exactly what year model it's supposed to be. I just know it's supposed to be the first generation one. And, uh, that seemed to do alright. I don't think the engine will come out no matter what you do. It'll always stay partially attached. But, to test that, to make sure, we could do something like this where we go... And then say, break all brake groups! So now everything comes off. Now you can see exactly what comes off and what stays on, though. So the doors, they do come off, but they're hanging on really tightly because they don't want to go. And so is the front fender, but the engine seems to be staying pretty sturdy in place, which makes me think it's not possible to, like, tear the engine out completely. Actually, it's always going to be partially attached. Um, but aside from that, you could just uh, watch it roll down again, and then maybe we could uh, go somewhere else and do some more stuff like this. All right, we're gonna end it right on that jump. If it makes it, it's not gonna make it. You know what, no, we're not gonna make it, so let's just uh, get out of here. And now let's make our way to, how about, oh, I know which one I want, but I can't find it because I'm being blind. Oh, Cliff. Since we're in the uh, mountains, we might as well use the rally. Uh, I just thought of something. I forgot about the street sleeper. Right, I'll explain it to you while this one falls down a cliff because it's actually just a combination of the cars you've seen. It takes the engine from the 200 horsepower version and the suspension from the stock one and mixes them together, basically. So, that's all you really need to know about that one. It's nothing that you haven't seen, it's just a different combination of parts. Now, on to going down this cliff in the most violent way possible. Well, I mean, we could do sun gravity and that'd be even more violent, but... That's not maybe the goal. Just a generally violent way, but not the most violent way is what I should say. And hopefully it'll actually get damaged. There's some damage, okay. I guess kind of just getting little bumps and bruises. I'm like, no, I want big damage. Now they got the big damage. Although the big damage is yet to come. That's going to be at a different map in a few minutes or seconds or whatever. I don't know. Depends if I want to do two of these and I haven't decided yet. This one's looking pretty cool so far, so I might... I think I'll do another one. Just just because. And into the sand. Which does a really good job of slowing you down, I might add. Even if you have no wheels or anything, it'll slow you down, no problem. Off of the dirt we go. And back it up, back it up, back it up. No, forward it up. And two of my wheels are gone, so I doesn't it doesn't really matter what I do anymore because they're missing. And this one's going down the exact same spot. I don't want that. Go down a different area, like over here. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Because doing the same thing twice, why would I want to do that? Try to make it different at least. Even though it might not be totally different, it is somewhat different. Like this is a lot steeper. This car really likes doing like that, that spinning motion, it seems like. More so than other cars. Like, all cars do do that, it seems like, when you go down the cliff. But this one does it more. Or I might just be imagining that, or it might be coincidence, I don't know. I'm just pointing out what I see. Now on to the next map. We're just going from map to map to map. This is going to be like the new ending. We go boom boom, then we're going to go to Leap of Death, then we go to Brutal Slope. Or something like that. Depends on how I feel, the order might be different anytime, who knows. Since it hasn't been in any of the videos so far, I might as well use the Street Sleeper version, even though there's no real cosmetic differences that you'll see. It's kind of just a good thing just to have it there, so you can say, Hell Oh, it is exactly what he said. I'm not lying to you. And I chose a custom color because that other color looked too dark to be able to see the details well, and now we're off. And I know, textures are still broken. You know, I used- they changed how you fix it. I'm like, I don't know how to fix this no more, I'm just gonna leave it black. I- I, I gotta actually look it up, that's the thing. I've always just said, I'm gonna figure it out, and I never figure it out. I should probably just look it up, but I'm like, no, I wanna figure this out, I got this. I'm just being all like, I can do this even though I can't. Alright, so here is crash number one going down this hill, and the engine just pops out. The engine's like, I'm out of here. Although, I don't know if it will. This would be, it actually might come out entirely this time, actually, looking at it. I don't know. Engine, are you going to stay along for the ride? Or, oh, it's, it's visually still, like, attached by stuff, but it does come out entirely. Because that engine is way out of here. Car itself... Um, what car? You mean that chunk of metal? 
Yeah, one crash on this place and it usually does that, so I don't... Like, there's not much to say about Leap of Death. It's always very similar. The main reason I do is just to see, is it really glitchy on, like, the first crash or something? Because if that happens, that's usually bad. But this one looks solid all the way to the bottom. And just because I usually do two, we'll do another one. I uh, make it a different angle, so we'll say, like, oh, man, that ramp is scary. I don't want to go over there. Oh, no. Oh, that was weird. I threw off my wheel, and there was a little lag spike. Like, I didn't even really see the wheel fly off because it was just a little lag, and then, whoop, wheel's gone. All right, eight times slow-mo, and actually, full speed. Gotcha there. You didn't expect that full speed, did you? Neither did I. But then I remembered, oh, yeah, I should have one in full speed, one in real time. And you can see just how crazy real time is. The engine stayed here, though. The engine's right here with me still. He's like, I am part up. Oh, never mind. The engine went away. He don't like me no more. Now he's gone entirely. I can't even see where he went. Bye, engine. I'll miss you. And again, no major glitches with the glitches with the car. That's great. All right. So let's make our way to yet another level. And this will be the last one, and it'll be Brutal Slope. I guess for this one, we should probably be using the fastest one, so that way the crash can be as fast as possible, which means the JDM one will be the one we use, and let's use black here. I know, I never use black, but I'm just like, you know what, mixing it up. And we'll probably won't be able to see things that well, and I'll probably be angry that I even did this, and I'll regret it, but we're going to do it anyways. All right, go, full throttle. First thing we're going to do is make a convertible, and there actually were some convertibles for this car, like sort of official ones. They weren't out of the Honda factories, but they were sold at Honda dealerships. If that makes any sense. Um, there was like a company who made convertibles out of these cars, and then they were still sold through Honda and they had the warranties and everything. Just a fun little tidbit. And those wheels were kind of freaking out it looked like. I don't know what was going on with them. Either way, I made it to where I wanted to go and now we have a convertible prelude. Can I stop it before it gets to the jump? Uh-uh. Wait, come on. Make it gentle. Gentle. Oh, there goes my wheel. That's not- oh. Yeah, both my wheels are gone. That wasn't gentle at all. That would look like a good car. Look at that convertible. So, such good lines to it. Oh, so pretty. I like the fact that the engine basically scraped wherever you go because it kind of fell out. Right. Not a good car. Uh, but one thing I want you to watch is the wheels, like kind of how they wobble when they get to high enough of speeds, it seemed like. Like, they didn't look totally round. It was unusual. And part of the reason, I think, was just because I wasn't going that straight. I kind of came at the thing crooked. But I'm not exactly 100% sure what caused it. Either way, we'll see if I can sh uh, show you what it looked like. Alright, here. Freeze physics. How's that tire? That tire it looks okay. That tire, you can that one, you can see it. That don't look round no more. That thing is all not doing so well. So let's just say this car from the fa um, not from the factory. The version in this mod comes with tires that are not rated for these kinds of speeds because they get um overly. Is the easiest way to say it, or maybe it's a suspension and the way it puts the weight on the tires. I don't know exactly what's causing it. I just know that is unusual and it's probably not supposed to happen. Anyways. Last crash. Engine comes out entirely. And the engine is beaten. Like literally it's beaten like a heart. Flies way out of here. And body of the car. Well, there. Here's what's left of it. Where'd the engine go? Well there's a tire. That's not what I want. There, there's the engine. He's coming back to me. Come to me engine. You belong inside of me. He's not gonna. Oh well. Um, so I guess uh, that'll do it for the Honda Prelude, and until next time, this is YBR, I'll see ya. Bonus time, we're back after the outro because I was editing the video and I realized I did no rallying with the Rally Sport. And with a name like Rally Sport, I had to do a little bit of rally racing just to see how it does. And that doesn't necessarily mean it'll actually be good at rallying, but I think it does alright. It still has a really small engine in it though, the 80 horsepower version, so... It's kind of slow enough where it avoids getting into trouble just because it's going so slow around every corner, but the suspension seems to cope all right with all the bumps and jumps in a rally course, uh, like this one at least. It's not the roughest of courses, but it does have a good amount of bumps to it, as you can see 
We're bouncing all over the place. I'm probably going to spin out right here to try to keep the car on the road unless I really slow down. And, um, yeah, it seems to do all right. It's just, uh, not that fast. Because 80 horsepower. So, I'm not going to do this whole course. In fact, I need to do a video for this place. That'll probably be what I do tomorrow. Because I've been meaning to for a long, long time. It's been in the, v uh, the map selector for... Oh, I don't know how long. It's been there a while. And I've been meaning to make a video for it, but I always chicken out because it's actually a place where you can like time how long it takes you to do the course and I'd be like oh man it took me 10 minutes to do it because I suck at driving and I don't want to admit that even though it's totally true uh, anyways though there's just a little bit of rallying with this car and I'm gonna go ahead and crash into a tree and end this for the second time and it's gonna be the last outro I promise um, so until next time this is YBR I'll see ya also if there's anything else you'd like to see with this car feel free to request it alright see ya again third time I lied it's three times Make it four. I'll see ya.